Antioch Baptist Church North, where we are Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound. We stand on the four pillars of fellowship, evangelism, doc doctrine, and stewardship. Let us all stand at this time where we recite the 100 Psalms together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let's give God some praise this morning. Let's lift the name of the Lord up. If God has blessed you this week, give God the praise. If God has provided food on your table, give God the praise. If God has healed your body, give God the praise. If God woke you up this morning on due time, in your right mind, we give God the praise. We thank God right now for being a good God, amen. We thank God for bringing us through trials and dangers seen and unseen. If you've never accepted Christ as your personal savior, or need to renew your relationship with God. The opportunity will be given during the service as well as the opportunity to give. Amen? Amen. We will now have our devotion. Good morning. I will be reading the scripture this morning from Matthew 26. 26 through 30. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, drink ye all of it. But this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of, the, of this fruit of the vine 
until the, that day when I drink it, when I drink it new with you in the Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, reaps, and doers of his most holy word. Amen. Let, Let us, us pray. pray. Gracious, kind Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace one more time. We thank you, Lord, for touching our hearts early this morning, getting us started on a brand new day's journey. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Lord, we thank you for, for being with us all last night. And Lord, you started us off early this morning allowing us to go to Sunday school, both online and in person. We thank you for our facilitators who brought your word to us today. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless our pastor, Reverend Kenneth L. Alexander, his wife, Sister Lisa, their family, continue to touch them and anoint them. And Lord, we pray for each person represented here today, both online and in person. Lord, we're going to carry your word to those who don't know you. But Lord, we need your strength. We need your power. We need your ability to witness to them that Jesus is real and that he's real indeed. For if it had not been for him on our side, Lord, we don't know where we would be. But Lord, because of your grace and your mercy, what a mighty God we do serve. And so Lord, we say thank you. Much obliged. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. Help us to press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask this prayer. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Good morning, Antioch. If you could lend your voices and help me sing this communion song. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood, and I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, and I know it was the blood for me. And I know it was the blood for me. It must have been Jesus' blood. It must have been Jesus' blood. It must have been Jesus' blood for me. And I know it was the blood for me. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died for me. blood for me. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. They pierced him in. 
in his side They pierced him in his side They pierced him in his side For me blood for me yeah church say amen amen let's let the uh, worshipers in at this time as we allow the worship, worshipers to come in let us all stand at this time when you are church covenant Find those on the back of your pews. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. of disagreement within our church what do we what do we covenant to do how shall we strive to be living witnesses for Jesus Christ Tonight was 
some other church and we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. You may be seated, but we'll now have our announcements. Good morning, Antioch. I'm Sister Johnny Thomas. It is a blessing and an honor to bring you the announcements today. Thank you cards were received from Reverend Aaron T. Brown, Sr., Brother Arnold and Sister Denise Curtis, the Tigner, Jackson, and Williams families, and the Wardley and McLeody families. And if you will allow me a moment, I would like to express my sincere appreciation and thanks for your prayers, your encouragement, and your support because the prayers of the righteous availeth much, and for God's grace and mercy, all is well with me. Please keep in prayer those who are in bereavement. Sister Mary Hill, Sister Minnie Taller, and the entire Warren Hill and Taller families. Sister Hill's grandson and Sister Toller's great nephew, Devorian Lawan Warren Hill passed, and additional information is forthcoming. Mother Effie Knowles and the entire Knowles and Swint families. Mother Knowles' sister, Lillian Jeanette Swint passed, and arrangements are pending. Brother Albert and Sister Naomi Floyd and the entire Floyd family. His brother, Melvin Floyd, passed, and arrangements are pending. Please continue to pray for our members who are grieving those in hospice, receiving treatment in hospitals, being cared for in nursing homes, and convalescing at home. If you would like a member from our Caring Comfort Ministry to call and pray with you, please don't hesitate to contact the church office at 404-688-5679. Holy Communion. For those worshiping with us virtually, please prepare for communion service by setting aside crackers or bread to symbolize the body of our Lord and Savior and juice symbolizing the shedding of Jesus' blood for the remission of our sins. Antioch's Grief Share has started a new session. Grief Share is a support group to help and encourage you after the death of a spouse, child, family member, friend, or other loved ones. The 13 weekly virtual sessions are held at 7 p.m. on Mondays. If you're interested in participating in the classes, you can sign up by sending an email to griefshare at antiochnorth.org or by visiting griefshare.org and searching for Antioch. This session is not only for Antioch members, so please feel free to inform your family and friends. AUMI and Choose Healthy Life are sponsoring a Medicare Basic Seminar with Oak Street Health. Please join them for this Medicare education event to learn the basics so that you can choose the option that's right for you. Two sessions will be held in Fellowship Hall at 10.30 a.m. and until noon on Wednesday, March 20th and Thursday, March 21st. Please visit AntiochUrban.org for more information. Antioch, please join us for an epic Easter bash at 1 to 5 p.m. on Easter Sunday, March 30th. The bash will be filled with fun activities for the whole family. Get ready for a day packed with excitement, including a crawfish boil, bike giveaway raffles, an Easter egg hunt, refreshing snowballs, mouth-watering char-grilled oysters, bounce houses for the kids, live DJ entertainment, and oh, so much more. Be sure to visit our Facebook page for registration instructions. This epic event is free for Antioch members with a special promo code. But if you choose to register without the promo code, please know that a portion of the proceeds will benefit AUMI. You don't want to miss out on this unforgettable Easter event. Added members orientation sessions are at are offered to all new members of Antioch who have not been baptized or received the right hand of fellowship. A virtual orientation class is scheduled for 9 a.m. until noon on Saturday, March 23rd on Zoom. Please visit our church website for more information. We look forward to seeing you. Baptism in the right hand of fellowship will be held during our 10 a.m. worship service on Sunday, March 24th. Save the date for our spring 2024 health fair hosted by AUMI and Choose Healthy Life. Get free health and wellness screenings and valuable health information, including biometrics, vision, dental, cooking demonstrations, health education, and so much more. The health fair will be held at 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. on Saturday, April 13th at the 590 building, which is located at 590 North Avenue. Reverend J. Scott Copeland, pastor of the Prospect Baptist Church of Lafayette, Georgia, is celebrating his 10th 
pastoral anniversary at 3 p.m. on Sunday, March 24th. Let us rejoice in the Lord always, Antioch. And again, I say rejoice as we celebrate and recognize the blessings of this week's Antioch birthdays. If you would like to be recognized on your special day, please visit our website for more information. Happy birthday to our sisters, Jan Hildred, Alexa Kimbrough, Monica Hobson, Jane Butler, Dr. Royal Baxter, Lydia Duncan, and brothers Jeffrey King, Grayson King, and Christopher Jones. Please visit Antioch's website or Facebook page for additional information and be sure to subscribe, comment, and like our Facebook, comment and like our YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram pages. This concludes the announcements for Sunday, March 17th, 2024. Be well. Know that you are sincerely loved, and thank you for listening.
Amen. Amen. At this time, would all of my visitors please stand? If you're visiting with us today, would you please stand? Amen. To our visitors, our pastor, Reverend K.L. Alexander, and the entire Antioch Church family, we welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service. From your visit with us today, we hope you will feel the love of Christ and the sweet fellowship that comes from our love for him. This is our special way of providing you with a rewarding and memorable worship experience. God bless you, and we thank you once again for your visit. Please remain standing until someone from our visitors ministry further acknowledges your visit with us here today. Amen. 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 Welcome to Antioch. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Listen, if you're glad God brought you through another week, you might as well give him the praises. It's all right to go ahead and praise him while you're in his house. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyhow. Looked past our faults and saw our needs. Members are requesting special prayer, and we're asking that you pray fervently for the Hill Tola family. And you heard part of that announcement, but Sister Hill's granddaughter uh, was killed a few weeks ago, and now her grandson has been killed. That's our member up in Fort Wayne, Indiana. She was here recently, so. Please keep that Hill Tuller family in your prayers. Keep Deacon Willie Carter and his mother in your prayers. Uh, Deacon Carter is on his way to Birmingham right now to check on his mother. And so we ask that you keep that family in your prayers. And grant, grant Deacon traveling grace as he goes to check on his mother. God is a good God. I don't, I don't know where she went, and I don't know why she didn't tell you the rest of it, but I'm going to tell it if y'all want me to. See, sometimes we see each other in church, and we really, you know, we act normal, and we don't really get excited because we don't really tell you what, what we've been through. Uh, when Johnny Thomas made that announcement, thanking us for our prayers and saying that all is well. This, this is what she really meant. The doctors went back in looking for cancer. The good news is they did not find any cancer. Oh, somebody here ought to give him the praise for what the doctors didn't find. I tell you, we don't look like what we've been through and don't look like what we're going through. I think he's probably on the... No, there he is. I see him... Uh, Maurice Baxter, will you, will you just step in for a minute? I need to make this announcement. Y'all need, that's Dr. Royal Baxter's husband, and y'all see him. Uh, Maurice Baxter uh, competed in a bodybuilding competition yesterday and placed first in Master's Physique in 40 plus. and second in overall men's physique. Yeah. 
Just want to remind everybody he works Antioch Security. <laughs> Great alpha man. We, we congratulate the daughter of Fred and Jocelyn Curry, Addie. She finished track season and placed in all races and relays. And then in girl, listen, we have to learn how to support our young people and encourage them when they're doing the right thing. Then for Girl Scouts, she surpassed her goal of 300 boxes of cookies sold and she sold 630. If you would, and if it's true, just turn to somebody and tell them, God has been good to me. Tell them, tell them this, you just don't know how good God has been to me. Tell him fact about it. He's blessing me right now. church say amen. amen amen it is now tithes and offering time amen. amen has God been good to you I said has God been good to you yes. and it's time to give back to God just a portion of what he's richly blessed each and every one of us with if you're in need of an envelope please raise your hand so that the record can be kept of your giving we ask that you continue to help us help others amen, amen. through our food banking through Ruth's place, Luke's place, Matthew's place, and Malachi Mentoring Ministry, and the Servant Night Seniors, SOS. Amen. So we will continue to do the work. So please help us to continue to be a blessing to others as we continue to do God's work. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. May we be blessed in our giving. In your name do we pray. Amen. Amen. You can see the different ways to give that be on the screen. Amen. Does anybody know that God is worthy?
I just get excited when I call on the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so many things to us. Hallelujah. And we declare that he is also, he's our light. He's our salvation. And so we have no reason to fear because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. It's a song that I believe we all know. So won't you stand up on your feet? Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. And join us in this song. We all know it. Come on, quiet.
for your prayers as you pray with me and pray for me and pray that God reveals to you what he needs for you to know. There are two scriptures that the Holy Spirit has placed on my heart today. The first comes out of Luke chapter 19, starting with the 29th verse. We find these words. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them, and as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And then Mark chapter 14, verses 12 through 15, we find these words. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, where well, wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him, and whosoever, wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, The master saith, Where is the guest chamber? where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There, make ready for us. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearers and doers of his holy word. We'd like to use as a subject today, make ready, Jesus is coming. Jesus is preparing for what will be called his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus knows everything that is going on. He, he knows that his triumphal entry is at hand. He knows the last parables and the last stories that he will share. He knows the plot to kill him is playing out. The chief priest plan is coming together. The crowd in Jerusalem is building as people flood into Jerusalem to celebrate and observe Passover. Jesus also knows there are some beams of wood and some nails waiting to be constructed into a cross. He knows that his favor from the crowd will not last. He knows he is heading into the last days of his earthly walk. He's heading to Calvary. He's waiting to be betrayed by Judas, and he knows Peter will deny him. Yet, Jesus is making preparations to follow through with the plan of salvation. He could have called legions of angels to protect him. He could have laid down his humanity, his flesh and blood, and faced the hardships in a glorified body with no pain, but Jesus fulfilled all prophecies so that God could save our souls. Even in Sunday school this morning, we learned about facing suffering. A lot of people think and want to take suffering out of their lives, and some people even fall into the false belief that once they've accepted Jesus, there'll be no more suffering. But listen, I've got news for you. When you were on the devil's side, he really didn't have much to mess with you about. But when you come on over to Jesus' side, 
then you got a target on your back. That's why we shout when we said no weapon formed against us. Amen. Shall prosper. Luke tells us Jesus was near Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, and he tells two disciples, go into the village, and when you get there, you'll find a colt tied no man has ever set on. Bring him to me, loose him. If anyone asks you why you are loosing him, tell them the Lord has need of him. We don't have any information regarding the man who owned the coat, but if we use our mind's eye, as we are permitted to do in the Baptist church, if we use our mind's eye, we can see year after year the neighbors asking, what, what are you doing with that coat? Why don't you ever use the coat? Why don't you sell him if you're not going to ride him? Why are you washing and brushing him if you're never going to let him work? If he answered them and told them one day the Lord will need him, I, I don't know how his neighbors and family would have reacted. But this man needs to be honored, and we need to remember him because God blessed him with something, and he kept it to give it back to God. Let me say that again. We need to honor him because God blessed him, gave him something, he kept it, and gave it back to God. Most of us, most of us, if God blesses us with, with something, we get it and we use it. We don't give God back any part of it. And then we thank God for it. But, but this man, he kept this coat and waited for Jesus. He realized that the coat was in his possession, but the coat never really belonged to him, but was the Lord's. I asked, what do we have that is only reserved for Jesus? He gives us seven days a week and only asks for one day back. He gives us 100% of our money and only asks for 10% back. I remember, my mind goes back. I remember growing up, most, some of y'all might not have had this experience, especially if you're younger than me. But I remember growing up and in almost every house, there was a living room. Y'all already know where I'm going. There was furniture in it. It was neat. It was clean. It was in showroom condition. But the sofas were covered with... <laughs> And everybody knew it was really not for us to go in and sit down. That was mama's room or big mama's room. And though it was decorated, it was not meant to socialize unless there was some special occasion. But even on special occasions, they didn't take the plastic off. <laughs> Thank you. God has just blessed God has blessed some of us with talent that only belongs to him, but we got it, we got it wrapped up in plastic. It's time to loose it and let it go to please the Lord. All of us have time, and I thank you for giving some time to God on Sundays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. Those times are reserved for God. And I thank God for Antioch because of so many things that we have reserved for God. 
You've heard the announcements, grief share for those in bereavement. That's the time reserved for God. That time on Mondays is reserved because of the Lord. The Care and Comfort Ministries and the Thursday Prayer Warriors have time reserved to talk to God on our behalf every week. Christian education reserves time to study and teach Sunday school, Bible study, Thursday nights. It's time reserved for God. Our womanhood ministry has three times a week reserved for God. The choirs and musicians have time reserved just to prepare to lift up the name of Jesus in song. The ushers reserve time to train and time to serve on Sundays, Wednesdays, homegoing service, and, and we'll hit the road and travel to serve in times of need. Members and volunteers have time reserved to work the food bank, the apparel mart, to provide food for the hungry, water for the thirsty, and clothes for those in need. The Visitors Committee reserves time to welcome strangers and visitors to our services. And so many auxiliaries that, that, that reserve time, so many auxiliaries that I don't have enough time to tell you about. But we thank God for our auxiliaries, our ministries that take the time to serve the Lord. In all of our work for the Lord, I also encourage us to please spend some personal time with the Lord. Spend some you on you time with the Lord. Spend some personal time with the Lord. With the preachers, I encourage you, don't, don't just read the Bible to prepare for a sermon. Sunday school teachers, don't just read the Bible to prepare for a lesson. Every now and then, break away and read for your own spiritual enlightenment. We give God the praise because any time we make for him, he's already ready to take the time to be with us. My possessions, it's a hard thing, but my possessions really don't belong to me. The bank might have me paying for them. But in the long run, they just don't loan. Somebody ought to say something. My talent does not belong to me, whatever talent I may have. My talent was given by God, and it belongs to God, and can be taken away by God. My time is not mine. This just is slipping out. I'm trying to hold it, but it's slipping out. I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. People ask you, do you have a minute? I don't know. I'm not God. I don't know if I have a minute or not. I don't know if you have a minute. Do you have some time? No, I don't, I don't know. I'm not God. Time belongs to God. And I'm glad he doesn't tell us how much time we have. But if the Lord told us how much time we had, would we live differently? Since my money, time, and talent belong to the Lord, I thank him for lending them to me at no interest. Even my family belongs to the Lord. If we can accept that fact, then we can prepare for the day when the Lord sends a message that though we have possessed them, it is time to turn them back over to the hands of the Lord. The Lord has need of them. While Jesus prepares for his triumphal entry, he also prepares for Passover. And we need to know, especially on this Communion Sunday, what the Passover in Jesus' day was. And, and, and listen, time does not permit us to go into all the practices of Passover, 
but I will mention some of the essential elements. The children of God were held captive in the land of Egypt. Moses went to Pharaoh and told him, God said, let my people go. Each time Pharaoh's heart became hard, there were plagues, water was turned into blood, frogs invaded the land, lice and gnats were everywhere, wild animals and flies took over, pestilence, boils, thunderstorms of hell and fire, locusts and three days of darkness, plague after plague after plague after plague, nine plagues and Pharaoh still would not let God's people go. But that last plague, that last plague went after Pharaoh in Egypt in a real personal way. In Exodus 12, God says to his people, tell each household to take a one-year-old unblemished lamb, and if your neighbor doesn't have one, take one and share it with him. Kill the lamb, and watch out, kill the lamb, and take the blood and put it on the doorpost, on the side post and top post of each door. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. And thus ye shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And then it says this, and listen closely because I've heard a lot of people say this differently. It says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. And if you're not sure who I is, it says, I am the Lord. I hear people say the death angel rolled. That's, that's not what Exodus says. It says the Lord rolled. And the blood, watch out, and the blood shall be to you a token upon the houses where you are. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will Pass over, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Passover was and is a very detailed festival. It doesn't last for 10 minutes. It lasts for seven to eight days. And during that time, God instructed his people to remember how far he had brought them. The elders would recite history. The children would re recite history. They would eat bitter herbs to remind them of rough days and sweet spices to remind them of good days. Don't you know all of your days will not be great days. But we need to learn how to thank him for the good days as well as the bad days. Jesus had his disciples preparing for his entrance into Jerusalem and preparing for the Passover. But this Passover would be transformed and we have to stop taking for granted that Everyone knows this. Some of us, some, some folk don't know this. They, they don't know about Passover. They don't know the meaning of Passover. They don't know what all went into Passover. And they don't know why we don't practice Passover as it was in the Old Testament. But see, Jesus said, this is the New Testament. <laughs> this Passover will be transformed from a feast in remembrance of those who were brought out of slavery from Egypt into a solemn reserved time to remember and honor how far God has brought us and how Jesus has delivered us from our sins. 
That's enough to shout about. You didn't pull yourself out of your own sin. Can I get a witness? God pulled you out. Luke says, and, with, and he said unto them with desire, I've desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you. Listen, that's, let me break it down another way. In the, in the Old Testament, you had to follow the Ten Commandments and you had to follow the laws of Moses, the Mosaic law, and you had to follow the Leviticus law. You had to follow all the laws, commit no sin in order for you to be in right relationship with God. You had to, you had to do everything right before you could be saved. But what Jesus offers in the new covenant the new contract, the New Testament, is grace and mercy. The law is still there, but we don't follow the law in order to be saved. The New Testament allows us to follow the law not to be saved, but we follow the law because we are already saved. Hey, tell somebody. You don't know where I've come from. You don't know what I've done. But the Lord looked past my faults. The Lord saw my needs. He blessed me. He forgave me. He sanctified me. He justified me. He redeemed me. He brought me out. Me up, he turned me around, he set my feet on solid ground. I don't follow him to be saved, I follow him because I'm already, I'm already, I'm already saved. Hey, I don't deserve it, but his grace and his mercy. He brought me out. He delivered me. I'm a miracle. I'm a walking around testimony. God is good. And he's good all the time. Any witnesses today? Hey! Hey! Hallelujah! Jesus transformed Passover into the Lord's Supper. It was transformed because Jesus, watch out. See, we don't, we don't have to get together and go get an unblemished lamb. We don't have to kill a lamb anymore because Jesus... I'll not have to finish this by myself. Because Jesus is the lamb. He transformed it. Jesus is the lamb. And when we accept Jesus as our Savior, our sin debt has been paid. He looks past our faults, sees our needs. We've been saved because Jesus shed his blood for us on Calvary. And if we follow the Passover model and think about all God has brought us through, we have to give him the praise. Part of the Passover is remembering your history and reciting just how far 
God has brought you from. I, I read somewhere in, in one of the Passover practices that they was go something like this. And, and, and God brought us out of Egypt. And if that was all God did, it was enough. But he didn't just do that. He allowed us to cross the Red Sea. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. But uh, he fed us with manna from on high every day. And if that was all that God had done, it would have been enough. And he protected us with a cloud by day and by night. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. But he brought us into the land of promise. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. Let me pause right there. If we follow that model and we apply it to our own history, it would go something like this. He, he brought us across the ocean. Even though we were captured and captives, he brought us across the ocean. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. But he kept us through slavery, through whoopings, through our families being sold. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. But praise the Lord, he brought us out of slavery. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. He brought us through Jim Crow. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. He brought us through the civil rights movement. And we obtained some of our civil rights. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. Well, now some of y'all ain't moved yet, so let's get personal. He watched all of it all last week. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. But he watched all of it all night long. If that was all he had done, it would have been enough. But the four walls were not my grave. My bed was not my cooling board. If that was all he had done, it would have been enough. But right early this morning, he touched me with a finger of love. And if that was all he had done, it would have been enough. But when I got up this morning, I was cold and in my right mind. Hey, I've got something to praise God for. Tell somebody, excuse me, but right now, I've got to praise him for all, for every, every, every little thing that he's done. He's wiped the tears from my eyes. He's been my midnight rider. He's put joy in my heart, a smile on my face. so much to thank God for. So many wonderful blessings and so many open doors. A brand new mercy along with each new day. That's why I praise him. And for this, I give him praise. For waking me out this morning. That's why I praise you. For sending me on my way. That's why I praise you. For letting me see the sunshine of a brand new day, a brand new mercy, along with each new day. That's why, tell somebody, that's why I praise you. And for this, I give you praise. For every mountain, hey, for every mountain, you brought me over. For every trial, you've seen me through. Forever, bless 
mercy. Hallelujah. For this, I give you praise. One Friday on a hill called Prayer, he died for me and he died for you. Stay there all Friday night, all Saturday, and all Saturday night. The right early, early, early Sunday morning. He got up with all power, all power in his hand. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, no, not never, it will never lose its power. It reaches. Hey! It reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood, the blood, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, not never, never lose its power. Do you know it? Have you tried it? Is he all right? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Say right. yes. 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 He's all right.
of the church are open, let them stand. Don't stop, keep singing. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior and you're here in person, we pray that you come now. Come down the aisle, give God your heart. If you're watching virtually, just type in the comment section. I accept Jesus as my Savior. If you accepted Christ as your Savior sometime in the past, but you know your relationship with God is not right, we pray that you come down right now. Renew your relationship with God. If you're watching virtually, just type in the comment section. I, I want to renew my relationship with God. If you're without a church home, no matter where you are in the world, you can make Antioch Baptist Church know if your church home. Just type in the comment section. I want to make Antioch my church home. playing softly. Give us your name and make whatever statement to the church you'd like to make. Rose Scott Harden from Savannah, Georgia. Amen. And, <laughs> and, and listen, and, and you knew who? When your daddy and my daddy used to preach in Savannah, Georgia, and I'm one of those Scott singers that used to follow them in the churches and do the singing. Amen. Amen. This is William. Family, I just, I'm a testament. This is William's sister. We give God the praise. God bless you. The Bible says the angels in heaven get happy when one comes. One is coming today. One more, John O'Neill accept Christ online. We that was that was Erica's daddy singing. From out of time. 
came in town and fit right in. But you know why he can fit right in? Because he knows it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. We've done as the Lord commands, and there's still room. It's time for our late tithes and offerings. And you've heard our story. And we thank, listen, so many auxiliaries are active. We, we also thank the sign language ministry for all your time that you put into service. We give God praise for you. Ways to give will be shown on the screen. And if you're here in person and you want to give through an envelope, the envelope should be in front of you in the pews and our ushers will assist you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will lead us in this offering. We thank you for this opportunity. And now lead us in the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I may be out of order, but I see Trey back there. Trey, you want to play a little of that? If not, we all right.
the praise feel right now. You, just, you don't know what you got to deal with this week. You might as well fill up. Now the feast of the unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way, and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and coveted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of the unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. 
And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. Ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, they made ready the Passover. When the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks, and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And they begin to acquire among themselves. Which of them it was? that should do this thing. We are admonished to go to God for ourselves. And if you would, bow your heads, close your eyes, pray the prayer that you need to pray we all have some things in our lives that we're dealing with that cause problems in our relationship with God. We pray that God will forgive us. We thank God for looking past our faults and seeing our needs. And we thank God that we're not what we used to be, but we know we're not yet what we ought to be. We know we don't deserve the relationship we have. So, so we thank God for looking past our faults and seeing our needs. Remove whatever it is, whatever barriers they are in our relationship with him. Pray the prayer that you need to pray.
man? Or do you know the man from Galilee? Yeah. He walked out on the water. He calmed the raging sea now. Do you know the man from Galilee? Um, do you know the man? Do you know him to be your doctor? Or do you know him to be your doctor from a Galilee? Yeah, he walked out on the water. He calmed the raging sea now. Do you know the man from Galilee? To be a way maker, do you know him to be a way maker, or do you know him to be a way maker from a Galilee? Yeah, he walked out on the water, he calmed the raging sea. Now, do you know the man? King Jesus, do you know King Jesus? Do you know King Jesus from Galilee? Yeah. He walked out on the water, he calmed the raging sea now. Do you know the man from Galilee? Yes, I know the man. Yes, I know the man. Yes, I know the man from a Galilee. Yeah. He walked out on the water. He calmed the raging sea now. Yes, I know the man from Galilee. standing in the need of prayer. What's the baby's name? The baby's name is Dream. They, they have a dream. Father, we thank you for life. With all of its ups and downs, we thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for all your miracles. Thank you for your favor. 
God, right now we just lift up dreams. God, whatever she's standing in need of, we, we know that you know her best. God, we pray that you will bless her. Keep your loving arms of protection wrapped around her, her father, her mother, her family. God, be with them. You know what they're standing in need of, and we know you can fulfill all those needs. God, we pray a special prayer for Deacon Willie Carter, for his mother, God. Be, be with him right now. God, we know that you know every fiber of her being, and so you know what she stands in need of. God, we still are praying for the Eva Manning family, still praying for Brian Mitchell's family. God, we're praying for each and every one of our families. God, some of us may look good, but we're going through the storm right now. But God, we know if you can bring us out of that last storm, then you can bring us out of the storms we're in right now. God, touch our minds, give us peace. Touch our hearts and fill them with joy and fill them with love. God, we know you can. We pray in this in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with extreme joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And all God's children say it. Amen. I love you. Thank you. 